Heyo, in this tutorial we're gonna create custom master buttons that you can use same as the default buttons, but with your style and text. So for this tutorial you need somehow a HUD setup or a widget that is shown when you start playing, like here, here is a widget shown. Uh, you don't need exactly this widget, I am just take this as example to add here a few buttons that you can test when you start playing. So you don't need this to follow the tutorial. Uh, if you need help uh, setting up a HUD or UI, then I can recommend you this tutorial. And now I can start creating our custom button class. For that, you need to right click in the content, br content browser Click on user interface, widget blueprint, user widget, I'll call it wb underscore button zero one. And first we're starting only with the functionality. So we can add the buttons in here and click them and trigger events. And after that, we will style it a bit. So in this button, I will add a size box. And we'll change it here from filled screen to desired. Now it looks super small, and that's actually because it is here. A width and height of zero in the size box. I would set it to 200 in width and 50 height. So this is our basic shape of the button. Default shape. You can also adjust it as you want. And in there, I'm adding now a button and on there text so nothing more for now and now we can click on the button and can go to on clicked here and now next add an event dispatcher and i will call this on clicked custom and calling that here on clicked. So whenever we now clicking the button here, it will not do anything specific like in this button class. It will directly call an event, this call an event dispatcher, calling this event, and this here will trigger then in the class or in the in another widget where we are placing this button here. So let's go to another widget. This widget, this is just a widget. When we start playing, it's showing up here. Here we now wanna add a few buttons. So I'm adding a vertical box. Dragging this here. So, and in here we are adding now of these buttons. Let's add five of them. Also selecting all of them and it's now currently filled on the width uh, or filled horizontal so it's actually wider than 200 what we defined in the button size box. But if we set here to center then it has the size that we defined. Then I'm also Increasing the, increasing the padding a bit, like so. And if you're clicking here now on the button and scrolling down, then you should see here also the event dispatcher event, on click custom that we created. And that now actually already looks pretty similar to a normal button. So they look the same, but this here is a normal Unreal button, you can see it here, and has here the on clicked, on pressed, and all these events. And here we also have now the on clicked event through a event dispatcher. So you can click on that. So I made it now for the first button, and I'm saying here win string. Call it maybe hello one. Let's do it for the second button too. 
and I would say here maybe test. So if you run this now, clicking on the first, you see it's triggering the stuff in this widget or here test. For the others, we didn't add anything, so yeah, as it should be. Um, if you need that as a normal button, for example, these events like on pressed or on released or on hover, you can also do that in the button class. You can add these here, these events, also adding new event dispatches and calling them. So the same principle as on clicked. But I think on clicked is enough to have in here because hovering is usually like for a hover effect and that can actually stay inside our button class. So um, next maybe also for the functionality would be uh, that we can change the text from here. So I'm going to the button and now we need, we have here, as you can see, on pre-construct and on construct. And the construct will be play, will be triggered as the event begin play. So when you start playing, it will be triggered. And the pre-construct will already be triggered in the editor. So we can directly see the change in the editor, but also it will be triggered when we start playing. So we're using the pre-construct. You also see it in action in a bit. So going back to the designer, selecting the text, making sure that the text work here is an is a variable. So tick that. And if you tick that, you have it here. You can drag it in and set text. So we're connecting this with the event pre-construct, taking here the text and saying promote to variable. I will leave it this way and also making this here editable. So clicking on the I. Then I will compile and setting the default text. Now you should see here, it also set this to a default text. So we can't change it in here anymore. If I change it and compile, you see directly switched back to text because it triggering this here and set it to the default value here because this is happening in the editor. If we're looking now in the main menu, then you can click on the button and you should see here in the defaults tab appeared category with the variable. If you cannot see that, then you didn't set it here to editable. So we can change now the text here, maybe hello, test or whatever you want to do here. And you can see it here. If we're playing, see here the update. Uh, sometimes these widgets are not updating properly. So it looks like an older state or an older version of this widget. And if you have this problem, then you need to go here, right click or like going to the, to the widget where it's, where it's happening browsing here and just reloading the widget and then it should every widget class here should be on the latest state again so sometimes there is the bug since yes for some reasons in unreal um next let's design the button or let's adding a bit style in here so going back to the button class uh, to the design tab so if you are already experienced with UI and Unreal, you don't need to do the following steps, but if not, you can do it and maybe learn something and later adjust some things to design the button in a different way like you want. But yeah, now let's design the button a bit. Um, first of all, I want to remove this default Unreal button background texture here. So I'm clicking on the button going here to the background color, setting the alpha to zero. 
And next, I want to add a background here. So I'm clicking on the text and wrapping this with a border. So this is our background. I set the content here of the border here in slot to fill. See, it's still not completely filled. I want to set the padding to zero. Now it's a bit more filled, but actually when you click on the button and search here for padding, there's quite a big default normal padding. I'm setting this to zero as well. And also the pressed padding, you might want to have some, but I also want to have to zero. And if we compile now, then you also see that update and it should be filled completely. So clicking on the border again and going here to the um, appearance, I would set the brush color to something black transparent. And well, let's click on the text and making this um, centered and maybe font settings a bit smaller. So setting this to regular. And um, let's say by default, the button should have a, the text should be having a render opacity of only 50%. So in the text, I'm setting the render opacity to 0.5. And let's say if you're hovering, then it turns to one. So as it was before. So for that, I'm clicking on the button, scrolling down here and adding the unhovered event. Going back and also adding the on unhovered event. Now I am getting the text block and set the render opacity to, to one if we are hovering, duplicating this and setting the render opacity to 0.5 if we unhover again. So if we're playing now, you should see here, we're hovering and text turns white, whiter. Uh, we can also add an animation. So let's do that quickly. I'm adding a new animation, calling that hover, clicking, selecting it here. So we now are able to set keyframes. I will now click on the border and maybe say add zero seconds it should be like now black going now to 0.2 seconds and setting this to maybe a bit brighter color and setting the keyframe here and if you play now you see here first all the buttons have a default looking like hovered and also if we hovering nothing happens uh yeah if we go out of the animation so clicking here it stays in this this state as it should be if we are hovering so you need to make sure that or like yeah go here to the to the zero seconds again and copying the brush color and going outside of the animation and pasting to here so we have this applied by default also so actually it's more clever uh, to go first with the hover state first setting the keyframe for the hover state and then going to as it should be when oven unhovered at zero and adjusting that and setting the keyframe and if you would go then out of the animation then by default it is also the state at as it would be when unhovered, so at zero seconds. Um, yeah, but we want to trigger this animation. So let's get in here the hover animation and say here, play animation forward and play animation reverse. Yes, let's test it another time. 
Now we have the animation additionally. Finally, I want to show you one last thing, how to adjust the font size. So by clicking here on the button, you can now set the text, but I want to add an option to that you can also change the font size in here directly individual for each button. So going back to the button class and here you need the text block reference and from that get font and you can't change it directly in this structure so you need to promote this to a variable or call it font copy connect this one here and in here you can now set members in slide font info if you've selected this node down in the details tab go to size and tick that and promote this size now to a variable and i will call it font size let's compile this here and make sure that this font size is also instance editable and the font size is by default i would set it to 19. so um then you need the text again and say here set font then connect the structure as well and that should be fine already so let's go here where we have placed some buttons and saying for example the first button should stay on 19 the second button should go to something bigger and it uh, instantly updates here you can also making a smaller text so if we're playing now you can see here the different font sizes and the custom button and yeah that's how you can create master buttons reuse them and i guess you can save a lot of time uh, that you not have to set up each button individually and yeah having master buttons and yeah that was a tutorial and see you in the next one